So welcome everyone to our every other week survey uh, prep meeting for Minnesota. We did have a survey last week at our site in Osseo. Uh, overall, with a three-day survey, I thought it went very well. Um, they, um, Kendra's going to join us in a little bit, um, so she's going to be late getting on, and she'll kind of uh, tell you how she felt the survey went, but they um, said they sent a notice to the community in the morning, but um, they actually, we didn't get it till later in the day. Um, I did get over there by noon. Uh, but everything went pretty well. We had a total of 15 tags, all low level, no immediate jeopardies. So I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the nursing ones, unless Josh, you want to jump on and share anything. You can put it in the chat if you want. But I'll start with a few things. Um, hopefully Josh is on. Um, one of the um, tags that we did get was under the individual medication management plan. Um, they did not specify on their exit exactly what they gave us tags for, which on every other community, this is our fifth survey, Every other community, they sat us down at the end and went through like what their findings were and why they were giving us the tags. And of course, these are not the written tags or they still have to go through the supervisor. But for the little form that they gave us with the check marks, this was the area was um, the med management plan. Again, this has been in every survey under knowing your med management plan. And it's saying that we are not being person-centered. So things like um, the example they did give us was that John likes cranberry it's juice. I don't know who's not muted, but someone's saying it's Sunday. If you could just mute. Oh, hang on, my girl. Oh. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, could, could you mute if you're exactly. not talking, please? Hmm. <laughs> I didn't even think about them. Nice job. <laughs> Can anyone see who's talking? Heather, maybe it's you. Can you mute, please? Anyway, under the med management plan, so one of the um, Kendra remembered survey team talking about that John likes cranberry juice when he takes his Tylenol, but it wasn't really mentioned in the MAR. So again, under your orders, it has to be very specific and there's a way to put in, you know, if you're crushing meds or there's certain juices or milk or whatever they want, there is that informational section that you can always put it under. And I can certainly show you today. Um, but knowing your the areas under your individualized med management plan, even though most of our med management plan is already pre-populated, every time you print your service plan, you'll notice you'll see a treatment therapy plan and a med management plan. In the evaluation, you do have to make sure that you're um, making it personalized. So those are the things in the orders you could put what they like to take their meds with or right in the order itself. But you do need to know if they ask you, show me where these items are. You do need to know where each item is, it is and how you can describe how we have it set up for Benedictine. So under the med management area where you describe if you know, when you pick the question zero to nine meds or 10 plus, in that note, you can start saying they have a med planner or they use Alexa pharmacy or they have an outside pharmacy, which is another question, but you can also put it there. And if there's anything there that they like or don't like, you can make that statement under that area. You also need to put in that area if there's any storage 
outside of what we have in our pre-populated med management plan. So you either have that we store meds in carts or they store in rooms right at the end of that plan. But if there's anything special about that resident, that's where you're gonna put it in that question. So if Lantus is centrally stored in a nurse fridge until we use it, you need to put that in there. So you need to be very descriptive. Then the third part of med management, documentation of specific resident instructions related to the administration of the med management. This is indicated that we all have special instructions in the actual order or service plan. So it, it, there is a quick note that we use that says, or in the med management plan itself, it says that all um, orders, specific instructions are in the order or the service. So if you are in the order section under your insulin order, you should say you prime the pen to two units waste. You wipe the cap off before and in, in putting the needle on. If I have TED holes in my service, is there anything about the TED holes for that delegated task that the aides are watching skin integrity? Are they watching for redness? Do they need to report to the supervisor? Uh, for weight monitoring, a daily weight, exact weights, you know, how are they um, looking, when are they reporting a two plus weight gain? Don't just say report for two pounds, but two pounds from last weight, two pounds from 154. So you need to be very specific, always thinking that these are uneducated staff members they're not licensed and we have to be very detailed in our orders to pass survey. Number four, identifications of persons responsible for monitoring med supplies. It's on the service plan, it's under that same question and you pick the licensed nurse. You just need to point it out to them that it says who the care by is and that we do that quality check every week. Hopefully we're doing that quality check every week because that is becoming an issue on every survey. It says identification of medication management tasks that may be delegated to unlicensed personnel. So again, on our medication order sheets or on the service plan, the service plan you have care by, right? For any delegated tasks. But on the orders, it states right in our med management plan that it will flow to the flow sheet that uh, designates who can do that. So if it's a licensed nurse, that order goes to Carlin, can you mute yeah. your, can you mute the Zoom, please? Yeah, sorry. Thanks, no, thank you. I forgot where I was now. Um, so each order, it goes to a flow sheet. So if it's an IM injection, only a licensed nurse can do that that order would go to the nurse only administration flow sheet. So that's how we kind of dictate who, you know, what can go to the unlicensed staff and what cannot. So that's how you explain that one. Number six, procedures for staff notifying a registered nurse uh, when a problem arises, that's also in a quick note, but it's also in the main service plan language. You just need to point it out to them. Um, number seven, any resident specific requirements related to documentation, med administrations, verifications that all meds are administered, monitoring of medications. Again, that's your weekly med check. We're always making sure that the meds were given. There were no errors. We're following up on med omissions. Um, and also a question had come up with Josh about um, if a blood sugar is out of range, how would they know that? Well, we all have cor um, corporate ranges preset in matrix. So if anything triggers outside of that corporate range, it will flag the, the staff as they're filling out their EMAR. 
if it, you can customize any of those range for that resident. So if someone runs a high blood sugar, we don't want it to constant be, constantly be triggering that it's out of range. We can change that range with the doctor. Okay, you know, he can give you that order. So again, the med management record must be current and updated when there's any changes. I don't think I've seen a tag in that for any of our communities. And then the med reconciliation must be completed with the licensed nurse. So just to give you that definition of what is a medication reconciliation, it's what you do every week on your med quality check or when someone comes back from the hospital, we're making sure that everything they're taking, the orders are you know, accurate. They list everything out. Um, and of course, if they are discharging, we're doing the discharge reconciliation and we're also destroying prior policy. So that's just a little review on the med treatment. It's been a big area. I think I've seen it tagged in every single survey. So I'm um, just making sure that your understanding, and I'm gonna send this out to everybody. I would maybe put these responses in your survey book so you're ready and kind of browse through them. But practice knowing where everything is for when you do have a survey. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through that during our mock surveys and, and make you kind of get used to that. The other um, potential tag we may have would be documentation of administration of meds. And we think it's where a medication was signed out on the wrong page in the narcotic book. Um, we noticed the issue. Uh, the survey team did go through the med carts very thoroughly. So um, that's something that you want to make sure that we're doing our narc, narc books correctly. Prescription drugs was another one uh, related to not having drugs in the original container. Um, and that was uh, someone took a medication uh, from another resident, crossed out their name and gave it to another resident to cover for their drug that was missing. Um, something about bottles that weren't labeled when a family brought in and it wasn't from a pharmacy. I haven't seen anything on that yet written. So we'll have to look at that when that comes back. Um, I'm here, Linda, just so you know, it's Kendra. Oh, Kendra, I, I saw your chat. <laughs> um, and then that was it for kind of the, the, the nursing nursing. Um, and Kendra just joined us. So uh, Kendra, do you want to kind of go over how you thought survey went from, you know, how they came in and kind of give us your perspective on the day? The week? Yeah, yeah, I can give the whole dirt if you want. Can you make it so that I can share my screen? Or maybe it already. Yep, Great. there you go. Great, thank you. So we had our sur survey come through, was it just last week? It might've been two weeks ago now already. Um, and they walked last in, week, Kendra. <laughs> time is weird. They walked in at 10 a.m. on a Monday. So not crazy. I was grateful it wasn't 6 a.m. Those from the skilled world have probably experienced that. And it was two nurses who came in right away. And we brought them over to our models where we stationed them. Um, and then he sent this email uh, I was told that this email typically comes through a couple hours in advance, so hopefully you guys don't get shortchanged like I did. He sent it as he was sitting in front of me um, during our opening conference or what have you. It just told us all of the stuff that we all know that we need to have ready to go when survey is here, you know, this list ready to go. And he said, you know, I understand it's not ready because I didn't send this and was gracious there, but... Um, good to watch your email and have the app on your phone because you might get that warning. Uh, it was two nurses that were with us for the entirety of our survey. So that was 10 a.m. to about 3 p.m. on Monday. 
um, 7 a.m. to about 2 p.m. on Tuesday, and then 8 a.m. to just about 1 on Wednesday is when they exited. Uh, the two nurses were there for the entirety. A culinary fella came through. I can stop screen sharing for this. A culinary fella came through for all of maybe an hour. I didn't even see him. He found my kitchen very quickly. He spoke with my culinary director, uh, walked through the kitchen, opened two fridges, looked at mealtime for all of five minutes and cleared us and left. And then on that same day, the Tuesday, our building engineer came through. She did a thorough, thorough tour with me of the building. She had me check so many fire alarms because she wasn't tall. So I'd have to hit the button for her every time. I assumed it would be, you know, two or three and we get the gist. She had us check it no less than 20 fire alarms to make sure that, um, you know, we've all been talking about this, that the fire alarm in the living room talks with the one in the bedroom. So if you don't have that in place, they will notice. The other things that she was checking that kind of surprised me was like the floodlights that we have in the hallways that turn on in emergencies. She was checking all of those um, and just kind of nitty gritty like that. Don't forget about your door jams. One of my silly tags is that we left door jams up in place. We all know those should be pulled for surveys. That was a bit of a whoops. But anyways, um, overall, they pulled a lot of information. We pulled information on like 12 residents from Matrix. Thankfully, Linda was there to help us with that as it was very intensive for my nurses. Um, they really dug into that. And like Lisa touched on, this happened to come up when Matrix was down on Monday morning. So while they were waiting for care assist to get up and running, they spent a good 30 to 45 minutes on my med carts, really digging in more than I've experienced before, um, which is how they found some of those kind of nitty gritty issues. Um, at the end, when we finally got to the golden exit conference, it felt different from my experience of skilled. Um, you know, normally I was used to them kind of walking through each of the issues and even giving you like a little mini opportunity to say, hey, that's not what you thought it was. Um, but rather, he said, now is the time to exit you know, collect who you want. We went there. He at the same time sent me this email that I'm pulling up for you. Can we see this? maybe, um, if it's going to load, yeah, but I all it is, this. yeah, if I open it like this, maybe. can you see that, Linda? Uh, no, it's just a blank piece of paper. It's still circling though, so maybe in a minute. Weird. I'm going to just stop and reshare because I can see it. Do you have a dual screen? No. Can you see it now? Yep. yep. Now I see it. Okay. So all this is, is it lists out every single like reg that they were digging into. Um, there's like 230 of them. And if you look close, they just tick the box next to the one that they had concern with. If you see these little X's. Um, and he was like, the, this is the deal. There's uh, 14, you know, two are in uh, building, one is in kitchen and the other 11 is related to nursing. Here's your report, any questions? And I even said, I was like, Bernard, you know, I'm used to more information. Can you give us any background on any of these things? And he said, no, you get to read the regs to figure out the background. Um, so that's what I did, obviously, pretty much immediately that night. When you look at these, some of them are pretty specific. So like this first one even gives you the tiny sections. Um, so then what I did is just pulled it over into here to find the exact like quote. Sometimes it got down to one sentence, other times it didn't. Um, and as you can see, some of these are more specific than others. You know, a tag under infection control program doesn't tell us anything that could be so many different things. Um, but a tag about menus being prepared a week in advance, I know that was because we didn't have two weeks worth of menus posted. Um, and then the actual report or 2567, as some of us know it, will come within 30 days to get the details. 
Oh, I'm trying to think of what else would be good to know. It was pretty intensive. You know, the first day it was just pulling a lot of information and we didn't really hear anything about it. The second day is when we kind of heard what their concerns were and then we're pulling policies associated with them. Um, so we got a better idea for how we were doing. They didn't pull any associate files until the last day, Wednesday. At that point, they only pulled two um, and that's all that they ever pulled for associate files. And then they, Linda can speak to the fact I kept saying, has anybody heard the word exit? Has anybody heard it yet? They didn't bring up exit until 10 minutes before they exited. So it was kind of a, a taunt where we didn't know where, when they were gonna leave, but it was just shy of three full days for my 59 apartment community. You wanna, um, let's see if there's any questions. No questions yet, but do you wanna talk a little bit about um, I feel there's an opportunity for every community for um, management nursing to be present at meals more often um, and kind of do that oversight, like how serving is going and where we can improve on, because I feel like that was an opportunity for us here. Yeah, yeah. So our biggest opportunity as a whole, and I, I feel strongly that anybody with a memory care is going to echo me on this, is that our memory care is 18 apartments of our community. So our resident assistants are responsible for serving the residents. We don't have an additional server from the culinary team who comes over to plate and serve food. Um, and what unfortunately happened on one of the days is that the food was there ready to go, but the resident assistants were running behind. And of course, of course, this was the day that the two surveyors were sitting there quietly as ever hiding in the dining room, just watching the clock to see how long it took. Um, so we've been working on our memory care dining for a while. I wasn't surprised that this came up, but it did open up more conversation about, you know, we all talk about rounding on memory care, but do we actually have an expectation of it's Kendra on Monday, it's Josh on Tuesday, or are we all assuming that somebody else is doing it? Um, just to ensure that the, you know, we know how memory care can be, the days vary and whatnot, you know, residents are slower moving, there's more behavior some days than others, but just to make sure that we're hitting that mealtime and especially making sure that there's not residents there waiting to eat when the food is there waiting to be eaten, there's just not somebody there to facilitate. And I really felt like they were trying to trip you guys up by saying, we're only there because you're here instead of saying, no, we routinely help. It's, you never know what's going on. And, you know, and so we're always yeah. coming through. Exactly. And they asked every, so I walk through and see this moment lights off in the dining room. And I, you know, we always have a text group during survey of this is where they're at. This is what's going on. And I just text everybody, you know, anybody that's got hands or can make hands. Uh, head down to dining, at which point each of the surveyors talked to each person who was helping and said, you know, why are you here? How often are you here? You know, what else should you be doing right now? Uh, if you're helping every four, you know, if you're helping four days a week, don't you feel there should be another resident assistant here and really trying to create the answer that they wanted to hear is what it felt like. Right. right. I just felt like um, we just, if we're more present all the time, then staff will say, no, they always come through or just, you know, mm -hmm. just, so we don't have that trip of, a oh, we don't see them unless surveys here. So that mm -hmm. shouldn't be a normal reaction from us as, you know, um, mm -hmm. nurses and managers, you know, making it a little more present and then and seeing what we can improve on at that time too. It's a good quality improvement opportunity mm -hmm. for everybody. Cause I do think memory cares. We always have challenges at, at breakfast is a, is a hard meal. Um, so for any questions for Kendra or Josh, do you wanna speak on how it was? I don't think he hopped on. Oh, didn't he? I think he was afraid of you doing that. <laughs> Josh, so for my nurses, they definitely experienced the most burden of survey because it was pulling a lot, a lot of 
resident information. They they gave up on navigating matrix within like one hour and said, oh, you know, we just think at this point, it'd probably be faster to have you guys print everything. And then proceeded to throughout the three days, choose like 12 residents. Um, so it was a lot for them to pull. I do think it's a benefit that they don't know matrix. So we have control over what we're giving them than them browsing through matrix. So it is kind of nice in one regard. Oh, sure. Um, but it is a lot of work on the other hand. There was a survey team at Humboldt that let me navigate for them. So I could just show them things and we didn't have to print as much, but this team wouldn't let me sit in there and navigate for them, so. Still no questions. Let me just check the chat. All in all, Kendra, though, I felt the survey was good. I felt it went pretty smooth. Um, I did not think they were as bad as the Duluth team. I think that's been the worst <laughs> team so far. Sorry, Duluth. Um, they were definitely like nickel and diming us, though. The one gal had her reg book out and was going word for word. And some of the things that they ticked us on, I'm curious to see how they actually are represented in the official report, but it felt a little, I don't know the word that I'm looking for. They were, they were picking out the nitty gritty for sure. I don't think any of us are walking away with under, you know, five tags to give up that dream. My competitive self was hoping for single digits, but not this year. Um, I do believe they told us the average was 33 or something. 22. 22, 22 is, is the, the average, average as of right now. But they did say that they've had many communities, many with 40 to 50 tags. Um so we are happy with our 14 for sure. But again, anybody from a skilled background, 14 just sounds like a real scary number. Any questions from anybody? Um, we don't have any definites yet, but the med management is like, I think the priority and the meal times in your communities, I think are the two highest focused right now that I felt they were really. Yeah, so the specifics under med management was about having specified administration directions for every single medication within the MAR, which is the capability of matrix. It's just not something we've gone so far to do. Um, an issue with documentation in, an, in a NARC book where it was just signed out on the wrong page. We resolved that immediately um, and they made it seem like they weren't gonna tag us on it, but they had it listed. Uh, labeling, and maybe you went over this, I know you were talking meds when I joined on Linda, but labeling of med bottles and then um, reusing discontinued drugs from another resident for an, somebody else, which um, we all know I think is a no-no, but we act quickly sometimes. Uh, Kendra, do you want to talk about the emergency plan? I don't feel like we, um, there was a, there, it was checked, but we're not sure yet what they're looked at. Do you have a feeling of what? Yeah, so emergency plan. They dug into our emergency plan a lot more intensively than I expected. Reed and I spent a lot of time on ours um, and I was feeling really good about it, but it was kind of silly things. So like in the, we used the skilled template for our disaster plan um, that, you know, you do your hazard uh, vulnerability assessment and it triggers those top 10 and you pull each of those checklists. And within those checklists, it references appendices that are straight from NHCIS, that might be mixed up letters, NCHIS or what have you. Um, so this surveyor found those appendices being referenced and then understandably went to look for said appendix and we hadn't gone the extra step of realizing they were referenced, printing those and having them in the binder. Thankfully, they're straight from, like I said, NHCIS or what have you. So we were able to pull it immediately and add it. Um, so I'm hoping that's not what it's related to. 
Uh, the other thing that she was checking really closely is making sure that we have that twice a year training for staff, um, whether that be a tabletop or an actual drill, but not related to fire, basically. A fire drill wouldn't count as that twice a year training. And then that once a year training with residents. And for us, what we did for that one is I emailed our the fire the head of the fire department, there's a name for it, and just said, you know, we'd love to have you and some of your team come in to visit with my residents and do a little simulation of an evacuation. Um, and our fire department, granted, we're a very small, quaint town, but our fire department was um, more than happy to come out and do that. Uh, and we had the documentation on that and the surveyors were very excited to see that. I think the resident training is a big spot that they're finding lacking um in their surveys just from their tone but otherwise the I think those are the main things for the disaster plan and then fire drills was checked by the actual building engineer I don't know about anyone else but fire drills for whatever reason it's so simple but it's been the one thing that our building has really been struggling to get in the rhythm of and you know I think to myself oh we just did one but it turns out it was four months ago the reg is at least one every other month to hit that two per shift per year. Um, and they definitely were looking for one within the last, you know, two months to hit that. Thank you. Yeah, I do know the fire drills. We have not been consistent. I believe EduCare, does that cover the twice a year training? Yep, yep, it does. So make sure your staff are doing that Educare one for uh, emergency preparedness twice a year. Um, and then on the staff, speaking of Educare, on the, on the staff files, we didn't have the attestation printed and signed for the two um, employees. So make sure your employee files have that in there along with their um their checklist for orientation and then our only tag with employee files is that with reg change we all had our staff sign it was from the support center a form that said you know i received the udalsa i received a new job description i've been trained on emergency evacuation policies and like one other thing i think the org chart Mm -hmm. He wanted to see on there a reference to being trained on the new policies and procedures of the building post reg change. And I dug through Educare transcripts, hoping that one of those would make the cut, but they specifically wanted the words policies and procedures dated after August 1 of last year. Um, if that's something you guys have done, if there's an Educare module I don't know about, there is not know. because you have to actually review the book with the staff or the e-source online. And it's not like you have to read every policy, but they have to know where to go for them. They have to be able to access them. So we have brought that up in a couple meetings, um, but that does need to be a training. There's also, uh, my suggestion was take one chapter every month at your uh, staff meeting and go through the policies for the month of August. It'll be medication service plans on the next time will be whatever. So you can do it however you want it. It's a big um, piece of the puzzle, but um, it's hard to sit down with someone and go through a whole policy and procedure manual and say, oh, here's your training. So um, it's just nice to have it monthly or however you want to do it, but make sure you document you do it, whether it's through meetings or, you know, um, and just have them sign a little attestation that today we went through the policy and procedure on this. <clears throat> We're kind of jumping all over, but good questions bring up other things. So uh, I can't think of anything else. Any other questions for Kendra? Okay, perfect. 
Well, uh, please note we're still making plans, me and Penny, to come and do mock surveys. We'll, we're going to kind of present it just as a regular survey. Um, of course, you'll know ahead of time when we're coming, but you'll have the same list of things to have ready when we enter. And um, we'll be asking you to pull stuff or look at stuff or where is this kind of getting you ready so that you it's not so nerve wracking when your actual survey comes. It's nice to do a little test run. Kendra and others didn't get that luxury. <laughs> well, uh, we did end a little early, so I will go ahead and get this recording on for everyone. I'll send out a notice when that's up and ready to view if you want to go over it again. Otherwise, um, you guys have a great weekend, and thanks, Kendra, for talking through your survey. I appreciate that. All right, well, till two weeks, we'll have another one. Thank you. Reminder, if anyone survey walks in, please let us know right away. Thank you.